Hey guys, today we are doing a double build. We're working on two USS Voyagers. We're working on the Special Clear Edition and the Standard Edition. Now, in my last video, I quickly assembled uh, the Standard Edition of the ship. So if you want to see how it builds up and what parts go where, take a look at that last video. Uh, but in today's video, we're going to keep going on that standard edition. We're going to do the painting and starting the detailing. We should be able to get it up to the point where it's ready for decals. Now, the clear edition is going to take a lot more work. Uh, this video you're about to see actually takes place over the course of about a week. And it really took me that full week to get the clear edition to the point where I had the standard edition a week ago. Um, and, and that's really just because of all the extra work you have to put in to lighting it. But this video is going to go over what to do to prep it for lighting, how to get it lit, and how to get wires through those pylons and still have working hinges. So let's start off by looking at painting the already assembled Standard Edition. As you can see, I've put on the photon torpedo launchers. I have started masking off the clear parts that I already painted and the clear parts that I didn't paint. And you can see I have put some more of those photon torpedo launchers down on the bottom. And now we're ready to put on our base coat. All right, this is my custom mix of paint. It is very close to the plastic color that's already molded in. And I mixed up a big batch to use on both of the model kits I'm doing. This is almost entirely Tamiya white. I'd say it is probably 75 to 80% white uh, with sky gray added in for the rest of it. And just a little bit of sky blue uh, to give it a blue color. Uh, but as you're going to see, this is almost an exact match for what the plastic is done in. And I think it's a really good color for Voyager. All right, so here's my paint laid down. You can see uh, maybe a little bit paler uh, than what's on the kit plastic, but a pretty darn good match. Now, of course, this version is clear or translucent uh, so that you can put lights inside and then uh, scrape the paint off the outside to have the lights shine through in the windows. Now, you don't want to just leave it clear when you put the lights in. Um, it's actually very hard to light block something from the outside. There's all sorts of details and cracks and crevices where uh, you have to put down so much paint you'd lose some of those details if you only tried to light block it from the outside. So you've got to do some light blocking from the inside where there's a lot less detail, things are rounded, things are smooth. Uh, so what you have to start off doing is just putting down tape behind all the windows that you eventually want lit. Uh, once you've done that, you'll spray the inside of the ship with black, silver, white, whatever colors you want to stop the light coming through, except in the places where you want it. So I've already gone ahead and put down those little pieces of tape on the four main parts of the ship that have windows. And as you can see, there are a lot of windows in this ship. Every single one of these where you see those pieces of tape, uh, the, we'll peel that tape off. Then we'll have light shining through. We'll light block those small areas from the outside and then scrape away the paint to light this ship. So for our first step, we're going to start airbrushing layers of black, silver, and white on the inside of the ship. We have the base coat on the ship. We've unmasked the clear parts uh, just so it can look a little bit more like a ship. Now we've got to start breaking up this solid patch of color. Now, this ship does not have an Aztec pattern, uh, but on all these little panels, there are panels that get different shades. So I'm going to start masking off just some random panels, and we're going to paint another color on them. So this was our custom mix that we were using before. And here we have uh, pretty much 
the same thing, just slightly different proportions. Uh, this one has a little bit more blue, uh, but just a little bit. Okay, now in addition to all those cool blue and cool gray panels, we also have a few panels that should be more of a warm gray. Now, I very much prefer masking like I did up here where I get to mask around the space that I'm going to airbrush. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really work out easily to do that. Uh, so down on these lower panels, we're gonna mask the opposite way. So now I've masked those gray panels and now I'm going to take the areas around them back to the base coat. For the phaser strips, I'm using a color called Deck Tan, which is kind of a darker uh, tan color that looks like it'll match the phaser stripes on the model. For the sensor palettes, I'm going to be painting those a silver before I start picking out a few colors and doing a little bit of a wash to show the detail. Uh, for these control thrusters, I'm going to be doing those in a copper. Now, all of these colors are a little more muted and less of a contrast than what's on the studio model. Uh, these and the deflector dish on the studio model are very orange, orange, and this is a lot darker. The phaser strips are much darker as well. I'm doing colors that are a little bit more muted because once they showed it on the screen, the cameras and the post-production muted everything, brought everything a lot closer together. So if you watched the Voyager show, you never saw these as orange, orange. You saw them much more muted. So I'm going to do muted colors for a lot more of this than what's on the studio model. Okay, so now, now we're really starting to look like a ship. Uh, we're getting to the point where we can do some things with the wash and start putting the decals on. And this is going to look pretty good, except we still have to do all of those paint steps on the bottom of the ship. So you can see we're back to that real plain base coat down here. Uh, we do have the deflector dish done. Uh, but yeah, we've got to... Take this and get it looking more like this. So in this point in my two builds, the standard edition is pretty much painted, top and bottom. 
And it's been a very fun, nice build. The clear version is a much different story. Still unassembled. We're going to fix that now. For the nacelles themselves, very simple work. An LED strip with an LED mounted up front. And we've painted the grill blue and these little parts red. Uh, so that's gonna light up real nicely. Now, getting the wires through the hinges, really easy. Um, so all I did was I took a file and just filed a bit of a hole right here to run the wires through. There's a lot of room in there. There's actually a natural gap in there, except for right at the hinge. So this was pretty easy. After that, you're just going to put the top right on it. You can see I filed um, a bit out of the top too. And you'll see there's going to be a lot of room there once we squeeze that closed. Now, obviously that blocks where the hinge is going to be, but that is pretty easy to fix. We're just going to mark where the wires go and we're going to remove that part of the hinge. All right, I almost closed it up without putting in these clear red parts. Um, there is enough room here to put an LED. You could do a three millimeter LED or any smaller one uh, to light this up. That would not be too hard. I'm not gonna do that on this build, but it is definitely possible to fit one in there. Okay, I'm gonna take a moment and close this up. Now, when you glue it, make sure not to glue this. You still need a little bit of flex there if you're gonna push this hinge part back in. So just kinda slowly Push this in and it will fit in again. So there you go. There is our working hinge. I also used a file right here just to file down this wall so that the wires will be able to pass through. I did the same thing on the bottom part, just filing it down right here to make an opening. Now, I'm not going to glue anything in place quite yet, but I'm going to attach this top part and sandwich in those wires. I cut out an opening here so there'd be lots of room for the wires to come out and go into the main part of the hole. Okay, on my lighting setup, I've pushed the wires for the power down into the stand hole. I still have this ring that will go up into the saucer and I've glued an LED strip down in the bottom. All of these are just soldered together back here to make one connection. All right, now that the glue's dried a little bit, we're going to snap the nacelles into place. All right, and those seem to be working pretty well. And we're just going to start building around these lights. So we're gonna snap the top part of this on next. Now, as I am gluing this, I'm using a small drill to open up the holes. Uh, these holes are very tight because it's a snap fit or to help it snap fit. Um, and once you get a couple layers of paint on there, it's actually, makes it fit pretty hard. So I'm, so I'm just gonna drill out these holes with a tiny bit uh, so that I can press it on and use glue to attach it. All right, I used a little bit of five minute epoxy just to hold this ring of lights in place. Now it's gonna be closing the saucer up and sliding it on to the main part of the hole. All right, now that we have the ship built, let's plug it in and see what we have. And this is good. This is exactly what we want to look like right now. We've got lots of the banks of windows uh, lit from behind. We've got 
all the areas that really don't need any lights blocked off pretty well. And all in all, there's not going to be too much light blocking around seams that we need to do. Uh, looks like we've got a little bit back in here and a little bit right under the shell bay door. But the next step is actually going to be mask off the clear parts and paint the entire thing black. Then we'll later be able to scratch off exactly where we want the windows to shine through. So I was about to start spray painting this black when I remembered a few things. First, on these windows, I can't really scrape the paint off because there's nothing really to follow. They're just kind of blank walls. So I'm going to try and put some masks down on at least a few of these so that I can pull them off and have windows shining through. The other thing I realized when I plugged this in is I am actually catching light on these impulse engines. Uh, so you can see that is lighting up. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but we are catching light uh, just through uh, the LEDs from the nacelles. So the lights from here are getting through the gaps. That kind of shows you how big those gaps are um, in those nacelles that I am still getting some light on those impulse engines. So that's a very nice effect. And it makes me think that if I had aimed an LED here, um, even if I didn't mount one here, if I just aimed one down here, I might catch even more light there. Um, so that's a very nice surprise that a lot of people have a couple different avenues to light this up. I'll show you something else that's catching a little bit of light. Uh, the little holes where you mount the photo photon torpedo launchers, those are catching some light too. So when I put the completely clear parts for those photon torpedo launchers on the back and on the front, I might even have those lighting up without having taken any special attention to get that done. Right now the ship is very, very black. Uh, we're going to spray the base coat on it. All right, it's time to use a little bit of an oil wash. We're gonna use it for two things. First, we're gonna use it to really darken up um, our sensor palette. But we're also going to use it uh, to do our windows on our unlit ship. And just like on the other videos where I use a wash to do the windows, you just use a Q-tip with a little bit of thinner to clean up the part outside the window. All right, here are our two builds so far. We have the standard edition, uh, very much ready for decals. The windows painted, uh, the phasers painted, very nicely built. Uh, the clear edition is definitely catching up. We're gonna need to do another coat of the base paint, and then we're gonna start detailing that one up as well. All right, we finally have the base coat on the clear edition of the Voyager. Um, and now it's time to start doing some of the paneling. Now, I decided since we've got two kits here, might as well do something different on the second one. So instead of having kind of the alternating panels with different colors, um, I'm gonna do kind of a streaking effect that a lot of people do on the Voyager. Um, now it should be subtle um, and it's real hard to do subtle, um, but I'm gonna do my best on this just to add kind of streaks along the panel lines to start accenting the panels rather than making the panels different colors. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna work on next.
right, once the streaks are all on, we're gonna go over it again with the base coat to blend everything together and tone it down. Right now, outside of the streaking rather than the paneling, I'm painting this the same way I did the standard edition. So our clear edition is really catching up now. We are so close to the real fun part of actually lighting the clear edition. But there's a part I've been forgetting to show here, and that is the landing legs. So both editions, the standard and the clear edition, have optional landing legs for Voyager. Um, I've just painted mine silver and put them on the standard edition. Uh, but there you are. There are four landing legs. And they just fit in on some slots that are on the bottom of the ship. And... They hold the ship perfectly. Uh, very well balanced. No need to have to put weight or ballast on any parts. Uh, it just balances really well. Now, it does have some caps for those um, if you decide not to use them. Uh, there's just a couple plugs that fit in where those four legs would be. Uh, so on my clear edition, I've decided to put that one in flight and not use the landing legs. But... That's an option, and that's something you can do on your build. All right, now it's time to start working on the windows of the special edition. And this is really why you have the special edition in the first place. So you can mask off everything, paint it in its entirety, then start removing those masks and the paint and getting the ship lit up. So we're gonna start just by removing the masks on our clear parts. And now we're to the part which will take a lot of time, but hopefully be very, very worth it as we start removing some of the paint from these windows. All right, so that brings us to the end of our building and painting stages for these two ships. So we've done both the standard edition, where we've just kind of 
accented the windows. We've done the landing legs on this version of the ship, and we've painted it with the panel lines. And this is absolutely a wonderful representation of the USS Voyager. Uh, the hinge is absolutely wonderful, holding it in those two positions. Tons of details. And just a real fun model to build. And then here we have our clear edition. Um, opening up those windows, I spent probably about an hour opening all of these up. And I absolutely love the effect. This was so much easier than trying to drill out the windows. And I think it really does look good. Uh, this was a wonderful way to do a lit kit like this and get all of those windows lit up. Uh, so I could not be happier with that clear edition. But both of these just absolute joy to have put together. All right, now I was really tempted to try and do all the decals on these ships and put that in this video, uh, but the, detail, the decals on this are just really extensive. Uh, there are a ton of them, so we're gonna put that in a different video. And in that video, we're going to look at this alongside all the other 1-1000 scale ships we've done recently. So we're going to see the Voyager from Star Trek Voyager along with the Defiant from Deep Space Nine. We're going to see it next to the Excelsior. We're going to see all of those lit up. Then we're going to see it kind of just with the other hero ships, the Refit and the Enterprise from Star Trek Discovery. Uh, so once again, uh, these model kits are coming out just in the next few weeks. I'd have to say this is probably the most exciting release we'll get for Star Trek models this year. Um, a Voyager in this size is absolutely wonderful. It's easy to detail. It's in scale with the other one with South and scale ships. And it's going to be a good size to actually put on a shelf. So stay tuned for the videos about the rest of the build. And thanks for following.